cannot do. Uh, Cool, cool. Uh, hi everyone. So today we have an uh, exciting guest, uh, Amir Kertz. So Amir Kertz is a research scientist at Google, working on extending image editing capabilities using generative models. He completed his uh, PhD studies recently. Uh, it's currently under review in the Department of Computer Science at Tel Aviv University, under the supervision of Professor Daniel Koenor and Professor Roger uh, Girius. Ma uh, his research focused on adopting and extending machine learning practices uh, within computer graphics. Specifically, he developed models and methods for 3D shape generation, texture synthesis, 3D modeling, and meshing. And without further ado, please welcome uh, Amir Hertz. Yeah. Uh, so, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, fine. Mm Yes, we okay. can show you uh, the slides, yes. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so I will introduce myself uh, shortly, because you already did it. So, yeah, so recently I completed my uh, PhD. Most of my works uh, involved uh, 3D processing and modeling. Uh, some works, uh, with other modalities like images and captioning and optimization. Uh, so this is just a little bit of my previous works uh, during my PhD. So one was uh, geometric uh, texture synthesis, where we train a network to synthesize uh, geometric texture given one reference uh, uh, shape. In this case, it's the golden shape. We apply the, its geometry geometric texture over the giraffe. Uh, another couple of works were uh, for 3D generative, uh, 3D generative for 3D shapes, both uh, GMMs and uh, yeah, the right one uh, for implicit shapes. Uh, and another works were uh, SAPE, uh, where we develop optimization technique to transfer mesh from one shape to another. Uh, and then the last year I worked at, uh, started to work at Google, first as a student and now as a full-time. Uh, and this is the works I will try to cover today, uh, which all of them use uh, diffusion models for text-guided uh, image editing. So I will start with Palm to Palm, which is the first work in this, uh, this series of works. Uh, which we published last year. Uh, I will talk a little bit about null text inversion and resume with uh, delta denoising score. Uh, we uh, presented recently at uh, ICCB. <clears throat> so, yeah, so POM to POM uh, is a method we developed uh, where we can uh, edit a generated image of diffusion model. So, for example, uh, all of those examples, we start with some image we generate, uh, we generate uh, the left side uh, using a text prompt uh, beneath. And by modification of the text, we can change the generated image, but, but still keep the, all the, uh, the structure and things that are not related to the change we do it in the text uh, from the left image. The image we started. <clears throat> so just uh, a little bit uh, uh, background. So we already uh, experienced, uh, or we already know about this uh, uh, image uh, generative model, uh, uh, most specifically diffusion models that can generate image uh, from any given text. Uh, uh, and they can handle any text. Actually, these slides are not very uh, excited now because we already uh, used to those models and what they can do, but uh, two years ago, one and a half year ago, they, it was more uh, surprising uh, how good uh, uh, these images and the quality and the alignment of the text uh, can be. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, so in our work, we try to to see what we what happened if we start with some uh, image that we generated, and we just want to do some small change to this image. So for example, in this example, we want uh, we start with a cat riding on a bicycle, and we want to change the color of the bicycle to green. Uh, and what happened if we generate again this image using the modified bond, uh, we get completely different image, or at least uh, it's the different cat, uh, the background is uh, is the different. Uh, and if you continue to make more modifications, or if you change the, uh, the animal, or change uh, the bicycle to be candies, or change it to be city, uh, we get much more different uh, images than from the image we start with. Uh, and these are the results with our method, uh, prompt to prompt. Uh, we made the modification, but still keep as much as we can from the image that we start with. Uh, yeah. So to understand our method, we need to look a bit about the text to image uh, models, the architecture and the connection to the text. So all of these uh, diffusion models are uh, several types, but during inference, we start with some random uh, Gaussian noise. Uh, for each pixel, and we gradually, the diffusion model gradually uh, denoise it to clean this noise until we get uh, the image on the right. Uh, and text to image uh, diffusion models are also conditioned on some text prompt. So at each denoising step, uh, there is also a connection between uh, the text prompt to the uh, pixels of the image. Uh, uh, so we looked a bit uh, inside what uh, this in the, inside this connection between the text and the uh, and the pixels. So this is the the typical uh, architecture of infusion models, or at least the one that are used mostly used today. And when we develop our method, it's a unit model. Uh, we start from the uh, pixel space. Uh, so we use the imagine model, which apply on uh, RGB images, but also other models. It, our method works on also stable diffusion, which is work a bit different, but doesn't uh, really matter for our method. Uh, so the connection to the text happen in some uh, layers inside the, these models, uh, deep layers. Uh, specif specifically, they are uh, the cost attention layer. So you might know them from uh, about those kind of layers from uh, text, uh, like uh, GPT models and those kind of models. But uh, in text to image models, we have uh, one uh, input from the left, which is the pixels. So in this example, it's 16 by 16 with some uh, deep dimension of the pixels from left and from bottom we get we get the embedding of the text so we get them using some frozen language models uh, it can be t5 or clip uh, any other language model these uh, embeddings text embeddings are projected to uh, yeah are projected to keys and uh, what we call the keys and values this is the a multi add attention framework. The pixels are projected into queries. So they are still in the same, uh, we have the same number of queries as the, same, and the number of pixels and same number of keys and values, the number of text tokens. Uh, and in this operation, the, we calculate attention maps that basically says uh, which pixels should be updated, but which by which token in the text. Uh, and this is give us the update to the to the pixel, the, the, the multiplication between the attention maps and the uh, text values. So another way, uh, if we look on these attention maps, 
so we can visualize uh, which word uh, which uh, word contribute to which pixel in the image for example uh, the cat the, the pixel that are really in the cat area are the one that are updated by the value of the uh, word uh, cat as we might expect it it's not very surprising but uh, this is what happened in the diffusion model. So as we might expect, uh, each pixel uh, get more uh, values or more updates from the words that actually semantically uh, described it. Uh, and it happened even for uh, some more uh, abstract things. So for example, here the word birthday uh, uh, is mostly contribute to the pixels of the candles and the decoration uh, on the cake, as example. <clears throat> so our work uh, is applied only on these attention maps uh, by manipulating and doing some changes to those maps. We can uh, change the things in the image without uh, arming other stuff that are not related to things we change in the text. Uh, so the first thing thing we can do is just simply replace one word in the image. So in this example, also that is of the slides, uh, we change the word cat to another animal uh, and still keep kept the same structure of the image uh, and just change the content uh, of, of the pixel in the area of the cat to be uh, the other animal we specify. So this simple operation uh, is done by simply uh, override the attention maps of the first uh, generation. So if we generate uh, in the first place, we generate this image of uh, the cat and we kept all its uh, attention maps during generation. And after we replace the word, we still use the same attention maps of the original generation. And this means that the pixel that originally looked on the word cat are now looking on looking on the word the squirrel or camel or any other. And this, uh, this kind of operation uh, guaranteed that we have the same uh, structure in the new generated image. Amir, I think there was a question on Zoom. Uh, Adir, do you want to ask a question? Uh, uh, sure. Yes. Um, uh, this looks really great. I'm kind of wondering about the attention maps that you're uh, demonstrating. At what mm -hmm. layer are you looking at? Or are so, you doing some sort of averaging over certain layers? Or uh, In this vis visualization, we show average of all of the layers, all the layers and all the heads, and okay. just uh, upsample them to the same, to the same uh, resolution. OK, thank you. Yeah, yeah, feel free to interrupt me. I just I cannot see the the Zoom uh, chat because the yeah, yeah I will I will I will let you know it will be because the screen uh, the PowerPoint uh, took over all of the uh, screens. Uh, there is another question. Yeah. Uh, sure. Thanks. Uh, I have a question uh, about the representation of the tokens. Um. If uh, you get the representations after the pre-trained language model, um, it, is, uh, it is highly probable that they are highly contextualized. Um, is it a good way to interpret them? I mean, you, you showed the attention map. Since they are highly contextualized after the pre-trained language model, uh, is it a good way to show them um, I don't know whether uh, you get my point or not. I'm not sure I understand, but we don't change the sentence completely. So uh, we, we yeah. should really get the representation from which layer of the uh, language model? The, the output, the 
this text uh, in the yeah, they are contextual and they are from the last layer of the uh, text models. Notice, but we still, the values are, we don't override the values, which are, they can be different by changing the sentence. We only override the attention maps. So, so if, if we, ch if we change the, the, the changing of the embedding, we, we still get different values after we override the, the attention maps, but but it's like we keep the keys and the by overriding the attention, we actually lock the keys and the query from the first generation. But the content can be different. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, I don't think uh, any more questions. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I will continue. Uh, yeah, so this, the first uh, application, we assume that uh, we just want to use the same sentence and just change one uh, word in the sentence. Uh, yeah, those are more example. We change the basket to be another container uh, or change the inside of the basket to be uh, different items. Uh, and so the next uh, things we can do is not replacing the word, but specify uh, some description. Uh, so in this example, we specify the uh, style or the, the uh, kind of the head that the, the cat wearing by just adding one another word to the sentence. So it's very similar to the to what we did before, but now we kept all the attention maps uh, of the first generation and just use, uh, insert the, the attention map of the new world between in the place we need to add them. So we try to, to keep as much as we can from the first generation, but still we need to have more attention or add attention to the new uh, words in the sentence. Uh, and this is the second application. We specify the style of the of the, of the uh, flower, and we can also add some uh, global uh, description and change the whole image. And we start with a uh, car in the street and change uh, and add the description of the uh, the weather or the lightning and so on. Uh, and the last thing we show we can do is change the, the uh, attention uh, uh, weight uh, for different words. So we can uh, uh, increase the attention to the word floral and get more uh, florally head in this case. Uh, and this is done simply by multiply the sum attention map by factor. Uh, it's the, the factor itself is when it depends on the model we use and usually it's some fixed range uh, for each model, but still need to play with it a little bit to find it. Uh, and this gives us the last uh, application we showed. Uh, so we start with a fluffy bunny on the left and we increase the attention to the word fluffy and get uh, but fluffier uh, doll. Uh, and we also can change the effect of the lightning on the image we generate uh, and so on. Uh, are, are there any questions before we continue? Any questions? No. Oh, don't have any questions. Yeah. Okay. I, I have a question. Hi there, Alec from Zoom. Uh, could you uh, discuss more a bit visually weighting? Does it seem continuous? Uh, how do you manipulate this kind of function? Does it need to be different for different cases? Just you multiply by 10 and you just uh, see uh, a drastic change or you have to try different multipliers? So 
No, we, we did need to try different values for each model, but usually it's in the range of like fixed range for all the manipulation. Uh, yeah, so we, we don't need to do something special. Of course, if we increase it too much, we get uh, just noisy image. Uh, but we use, for imagine, we use the uh, range between one, one is, is, the, is keep it as the same to something like five and I don't remember exactly for stable diffusion, but it was a fixed val linear values, uh, which after, uh, be, below, the, uh, below them, uh, we get uh, some noise images. I see. Do you see some kind of linear continuous change as you increase these uh, you know, values, these ranges? Yeah, yeah. It's Since... yeah, We don't need to find. Uh, we don't need to find very specific region. I mean, between one to something like five, or it, the change will be quite linear. We we don't need uh, to do something special here. Okay, interesting. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so one uh, really big uh, limitation of our work is that we cannot do some manipulation that changes structure. So in this example, we want the, the dog to be a line on the, to be slipped. So we expect it to lie on the grass. And of course, by the I, but what we saw already, we cannot uh, do such things and we cannot remove items or add items to the uh, photo by only changing the text font. Uh, yeah, so the first thing we wanted to do uh, after this work is to apply it on real images. Uh, so until now, uh, we, un we can only manipulate the image that we uh, generated already, and this example we want to do it. Uh, so this is not my cat; it's my parents' cat. Uh, I wanted to change it to another animals, change it to watercolor. Uh, so we continue by uh, this uh, next work, null text inversion. Uh, so uh, to understand the. Uh, how we can edit the real images. So again, we need to look on the uh, generation of the diffusion model. Uh, so we already saw we start from a noise and uh, some uh, caption and we get an image. Uh, so in order to apply a palm to palm to a real image, we need to do the reverse uh, thing. We, need, we start with uh, an input image on the right and we need to find uh, this trajectory of noise or we need to find the first noise that if we start with him will generate uh, this image given the poem. Uh, so I, I will talk about this work uh, uh, briefly. Uh, this post called inversion. So uh, there are actually a way to do it in uh, diffusion model. All you have to do is uh, just start with an image and do this, the exact same thing uh, as you did uh, during uh, inferencement in the reverse order. So we start from an image and the text. Uh, we get some uh, uh, prediction of the uh, of the diffusion model, but now instead of use it to clean the image, we use it to noise the image. So at each step we. Uh, we noise the image a little bit until we get a uh, complete uh, noise. Uh, this operation called DDI I mean, uh, inversion, uh, but actually it, uh, if we try this uh, do, uh, do the reverse thing, uh, if, if we start with it, now you try to generate an image with this uh, noise we got, we get not exactly the same uh, image as we start with. 
So what we did in this work, we just uh, uh, apply some, we start with this uh, inversion on top uh, and we apply some, uh, what we call the null text uh, optimization so we can get uh, this trajectory back to the first, uh, the good uh, the trajectory on the top. Uh, I can talk, I, I won't get into the details uh, in this work since there are many uh, improvements and uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, the mechanics are a bit uh, uh, detailed because all of those uh, uh, errors are caused by the uh, classifier free guidance uh, the diffusion models. But basically we can do some optimization to another text point uh, during the uh, diffusion inference to get this trajectory, trajectory back uh, to the same trajectory of the uh, inversion. And then we can use point to point to uh, to edit uh, those uh, images that we inverted. Uh, so we start from the image on the left uh, top to some, this uh, non-inversion, and then we can uh, change the text point that we to describe this image to uh, edit it the same way we, as we saw before. <clears throat> uh, yeah, there's some more uh, examples. Uh, and then, yeah, the, another uh, uh, follow-up, not by our follow-up uh, work, not uh, uh, by our team, but uh, they basically use uh, pom to pom to generate synthetic uh, paired images and start pix to pix, uh, and then using those uh, uh, large data set of uh, input image, uh, output image, and text instruction, they can generate, fine tune the diffusion model to directly apply uh, the editing on real images, uh, which is a very cool. And it's an alternative uh, way to do editing on real images. <clears throat> Another uh, cool work, also not by our team, uh, is extending uh, this inversion and prompt to prompt ideas to videos. So uh, I, I don't know exactly the details, but, but by they also they start with a video and fine tune it, the diffusion model to fit, to fit this uh, uh, to fit into this uh, video, but then use some similar manipulation to prompt to prompt. As you can see on the bottom to change. Uh, things in the video, like changing, as we saw before, changing the cat to uh, a tiger in each frame, and so So, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so the last uh, work I will uh, present today is the Delta Denoising Score, uh, which is another uh, text-guided uh, image editing uh, technique. Uh, so again, we start with an image, add some uh, text description that can uh, change some specific things in these uh, images. Uh, so th this approach is, uh, is very different from prompt to prompt. So uh, prompt to prompt and other work, we start with a diffusion model and, uh, and an image and yeah, and using some uh, manipulation inside the diffusion models, like the attention we saw before, and there are other works that use uh, feature injection, and uh, there are other works like okay, control net that use depth map, uh, segmentation, and more things to do this uh, editing over the image. Uh, and we get uh, different results. Uh, but in, in our work, we want to ask uh, if we can use diffusion model to learn, uh, to teach editing, I can say. So instead of uh, uh, what we saw before, we want to get from the diffusion model some kind of score 
uh, that say how much this image is aligned with the text. So in this example, we want to change the turtle to a flamingo and we get some score uh, for the alignment with, between the text to the, to the image. And we use this score to update the image until uh, we get uh, the flamingo. And if we have this kind of uh, this kind of scores function, we can also use it to to train another new model. So in this case, we we have a bunch of images of turtles on the left, and we can train this uh, distilled network to until it it generate good uh, flamingos images on the right using this uh, score function. Uh, so our idea or, or uh, inspiration came from Dreamfusion. So they use uh, this uh, diffusion model as a score function to train a nerf model, to train a 3D nerf that until the, so at each iteration they render an image from the uh, nerf representation and update it using uh, some score of the rendered image and the text. Uh, prompt that should that describe this uh, object. Uh, so the, the method called the uh, score function called score, score distillation sampling, SDS. Uh, and the way it works, uh, so you, you get an image. In our case, it's uh, just RGB image. In that case, it's, came, it's a render of the nerve. Uh, so this is the image on the left. You add some noise to it. Uh, you sample a noise and some t, t is the time step of the diffusion model is, is also controlled the level of, of noise we add to the, to the image. And then we use the diffusion model with the target point. So in this example, uh, we use uh, the text of Flamingo flying uh, a kite. Uh, and by, by the, the score is the difference between the uh, predicted noise to the noise we added to the image. Uh, so intuitively, if we if we have uh, an image that uh, matched the text, so if it was uh, the image already, we already had the flamingo in the image, then this difference should be low because the text, uh, the predicted noise should be similar to the noise we added. We don't want to it, it should direct it to the same image that we start with. And if the image is different, then this difference should be exactly what the uh, noise the or change the image to be aligned to this uh, text, to this new text point. Uh, well, it is clear. So what we can do as a, the most naive things to do is apply this uh, score distillation uh, sampling over an image with the new uh, text. So what we do is we apply this, uh, we uh, optimize the RGB image until we convergence uses this SDS score. And as we can see, the image become, the, we get much more alignment to the text description, but also the image become much more blurry especially the background, which are not, which is not described by the text. Uh, another things we can do is we can start with uh, image and the text. So the Z represent the image, Y uh, is the text. So in this example, we use the text as to exactly describe this image. And again, again try to apply this uh, SDS optimization over the image. Uh, and we get a similar behavior to before. The turtle changed a little bit, the kite also changed a little bit, but the background uh, became, became very uh, uh, blurry. Yeah, so, with, which it's a little bit surprising, but if you think about uh, this whole, uh, uh, SDS uh, operation is very stochastic because at each time we sample some noise and some T, 
we get uh, some denoising direction, but if we average all of them, then this, the direction can be, become very blurry intuitively. Uh, what we want is that if y and z are uh, 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 matching, uh, are not matching, we would accept, expect some change uh, in the image, but we want that if they are already matched, if this the text prompt already described the image, we ex expect that this SDS will be uh, close to zero, but it's not uh, the case, as we can see. In both cases, this SDS guide had some blurry images, both when in the top where the image and the text are aligned and on bottom where they are not. But what we can already see is that those two blurry uh, uh, direction are very correlated. So we can see that the background and all the things that shouldn't change by the text prompt in both cases are uh, similar. So this is what gave us the uh, idea of using those two trajectory in order to, those two optimization in order to calculate what we actually wanted, which is just changing the uh, turtle in the image. Uh, yeah, I will skip the, those ones. So again, another visualization is we start with uh, one image uh, to, and get this blurry image, uh, but uh, if we use the same text prompt of the turtle, we get another blurry image, but what we actually want is to do some, uh, uh, to look on the difference between them to get this much more uh, high quality image that still preserve the high frequencies or, and things that are not related to the text prompt we changed. <clears throat> so now we get to actually to the delta denoising. So as we already saw, what we have we have two branches. Uh, yeah, the one on top is we call it the reference uh, branch. Uh, so in this case, we have the image we start with and the, the text form that described it. Uh, and in the bottom, we have the same. Uh, we start with the same image, but during optimization, it changes. Uh, and we have the new uh, text prompt that we want to get to go to. It's the direction that we want to uh, to go. Uh, and at each optimization step, we assemble epsilon and t and use it to noise these both images. So it's important that we use exactly the same noise and the noise level for both of them. And then we simply uh, the Delta denoising score is simply the difference between the two uh, noise uh, prediction. So it's actually uh, the definition of it is simply uh, is simply SDS uh, score between uh, one image between one bunch to the another. Uh, and as we saw before, all the pixels that are uh, not relevant to the text are correlated and all the other are, should be changed. So this uh, delta denoising score give us exactly what, what we want. Uh, if, if there is time, I have more slides show it uh, empirically, but uh, for now, uh, this is the intuition. Uh, so what we did, uh, we use this uh, score. We start with uh, this is we can use it to just optimize an image, uh, given one text that described it and another text, uh, target text that we want to go to. We start from the bicycle and optimize the image until uh, we get this uh, known bicycle, known BMX or Vespa in the bottom. <clears throat> changing the, the coffee or the uh, drawing on the coffee. And so in all of these examples, we only apply optimization on the, directly on the image pixels. Uh, and also more examples. 
what we did next as a uh, uh, showing the in the start of the slides we can do it we can use this uh, score function to train a network uh, that do this image to image translation directly without uh, optimization uh, the advantage of of this approach is that during inference time the network is much more faster we can do specific editing in one uh, fit for the uh, step and we don't need to, to do optimization over the image. Uh, so what we, for this kind of training, we, we just need uh, to have a, a collection of image, uh, input image that we want to, uh, of the, 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 uh, the type of image we want to edit. So in this example, we, we simply can generate many images of cats. Uh, and what we do, do during optimization, we simply uh, uh, sample uh, one image. In this case, we want to train a network that transfer this uh, cats to lions. So we just need to sample a, a cat, give it to the network, and apply the DDS uh, score function over the uh, predicted image, the lion in this case and the two text prompts that is one describe the source images and the other one describe the uh, target images. <clears throat> and this DDS score is not, is we, not, we don't use it to optimize directly the image, we use it to optimize the uh, new network, image to image network. And the important thing is that we don't need a collection of target image, we just need a collection of source images and two text prompts that describe the, those images and the target image that we want to go to. Uh, yeah, and the, yeah, and the number of things we can do, we can train a network for many uh, or several uh, editing tasks. So in this case, we all also condition the network on uh, the animal we want to uh, change this image too. So in this example, at each, at each training step, we also sample some uh, edit operation, uh, and then we can train this network to do several uh, things. And of course, we need uh, several op operation and also several uh, text prompts that describe the source image and the different uh, target image that we want to go to. So in this example, we train one, one network to transfer cats to several, uh, several like I think there, are, there were six uh, different animals. Uh, so yeah, so these are some results of those kind of networks. So we train a network to change materials of sofas to different uh, materials. Uh, another one we change, we train it to add the uh, flowers to uh, or change the flowers from one input to another type of flowers. Uh, and as we saw before, to change the animals, uh, change the cats to different uh, animals. <clears throat> uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, if there are questions, uh, I would be happy to, or clar clarification, I would be happy to to go over uh, or to, to go over more details of any any work. Uh, other questions? Thank you, Amir, for your great presentation. Uh, I have a question. Uh, can we uh, condition on the image that we uh, instead of your approach, which is an interesting one, can we condition uh, on the image we want to edit? We condition the uh, diffusion model both on the prompt, on the text, and on the image you want to edit and then uh, try to uh, manipulate that image such that we get similar results to your approach. Uh, for which which work do, do you mean, or in general? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean uh, the, the, uh, the network you are using is conditioned on text, okay? 
it generates uh, this, uh, this, in this case in th this walk the new network is conditioned on the text and the and the image not just because we want no, no, I mean, original, the, the, the start of presentation, you use some uh, diffusion models that are that predict an image condition on a text, yeah? Uh, yeah, so diffusion models themselves, uh, we, we, we don't have supervision for uh, image text and the output image. Uh, I mean, the diffusion models are trained on data set from like that is it from the internet that we that they have only images with text they don't have image text and the uh, edited result uh, yeah i understand uh, i mean uh, we cannot add something else to the condition because the diffusion model can be uh, easily conditioned on something can we, we can't add a, another condition to the model by, for example, another bit forward model to uh, automatically uh, manipulate the image we are conditioning on. Uh, so the, yeah, the, there are works that condition on image, but the, again, the problem is supervision, so. Uh, if if you if you use the image and the output is the same image, then the network can simply uh, learn to copy paste the image. Uh, so there are works that use clip embedding of the image, like uh, paint by example. They they use they want to paint some region in the image with some image with some specific image condition. So we, they use the clip embedding. Of another image as another condition for the uh, model, and also uh, stack pix to pix did exactly what. Uh, uh, not sure. So, that's, uh, yeah. So what you said it's exactly what uh, no. Where's, Yeah, it's exactly what in stack pix to pix uh, did. They, they give the model one image uh, and the text prompt, and the sup and they have a supervision using uh, prompt to prompt for the edit uh, image. Thank you. Any more questions? Thank you for your uh, presentation. Uh, I have a question for your no text optimization work. So uh, yeah. how, do you, uh, how do you get the uh, caption for the input real image? If, if, if that will uh, either specify or some, uh, or using some other model that we can generate the uh, No, so in this case, we the, the we assume that the user can give us uh, the caption of the image. But yeah, it's it's the caption itself is, is important because if you use different captions, then you can do different kind of editing using prompt to prompt. So actually, I have an inside thing. Uh, find it. Uh, no, it's not there. Uh, no, I don't. I don't have it, but but yeah, you're right. You, we need the we need the caption, and also if, for example, if we don't describe the in this case, if we don't describe the baby baby wearing a shirt, we just say baby lying on the sofa, then we can, it will be harder to edit uh, the shirt of the baby. So. Yeah. Any questions in the Zoom? No. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is there a question? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
focus. Yeah, sorry. Uh, um, yeah, great presentation. I'm kind of wondering, uh, could you have used your the supervision from your original paper for the DDS paper, the delta denoising? So you would then have had pairs of, so after you generate and then do an edit, you would have pairs. Yeah. Could you have used that um, for supervision in the delta yeah. denoising? Delta denoising score. Uh, yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I think uh, you could. There, there are also uh, works to try to. So there, there are like. Uh, um, uh, I need to find it. Uh, this one. Uh, I mean, the, the last work in this, uh, 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 so they, 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 they trained some kind of reward uh, uh, model to, so they, they, they use, they, they first, uh, there are some extension to instruct pixel to pixel. They have uh, many generated image uh, of prompt to prompt, but many of them, uh, the editing are not, or the pair of uh, images are not very good, so they need some human feedback about them, and they train a reward function that, that do exactly that. They give some score for editing based on uh, supervision from, from humans also, prompt to prompt and uh, human. Because if, if you just uh, have many pairs of prompt to prompt, you, st it's, uh, you still don't have negative uh, examples. Or, if you use some, just some random negative example, it will be man, maybe too random, so. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Uh, maybe also in Zoom? Okay, I, I also want to ask a question, uh, if I might. So I have more kind of technical question about the uh, Delta Denoidic score. So, uh, it, as I understand, it requires some input images to train. So, and some, as you said, the, like uh, control prompt, like change, for example, change cats to lions. And my question is like, uh, so when you train this model, for example, does it like generalize to kind of unseen objects, or it only like, for example, if I train it with the images of cats with, that I want to change to lions, and I, for example, give a photo. I don't know, a dog, and I've asked to change it to line. Does it generalize, or it's just basically when you train it, it like changes and uh, uh, learns to change? Like, yeah, yeah. This, this, this network is only it, we train it on very specific, uh, like for manipulation, not not so many. So it, it won't generalize. If, if you want a network that generalizes, then you need, yeah, I guess you need to train it on many different tasks and not just four or five. I see, I see. So basically it, it, it is only like particular, I don't know, particular yeah. type of animal, true particular type of animal, right? Yeah, but okay. it, it, it might be possible to train it. We, we didn't try just because it's much more heavy training, uh, but, but it might be possible to do it. Over a large, uh, like large, instru large inst instruction set, like I don't know, hundred to thousands, and then it will uh, generalize. But I, I cannot say it will work or not. I see. Thank you. And I have a second question. The second question is basically uh, like what prompt to prompt does. In my understanding, is like this kind of semantic editing. So you maintain the structure of the image. But you change like some semantic properties. And, like, uh, yeah. What is your thought of like, there was like recent words, uh, for example, like diffusion self guidance uh, from also in the group of like Alexei Efros and uh, uh, I, I forgot the just author, but they kind of, what are your thoughts of like extending kind of prompt to prompt um, framework into manipulating not like semantic properties of the uh, object, but like geometries of the object. Because you, you said that it is in, in your limitation, right? That you can't like change the geometry of the object, but cannot be extended somehow. It's like an open-ended question. 
for example, if you want to change the shape of the tail of the head. Uh, yeah. Uh, but what, oh, do you have specific? Uh, not sure which uh, one. Oh, oh, sorry, okay, sorry. Uh, in this use of guidance, for example, they will like show that you can uh, introduce some kind of this like mm, a loss based on the mask of the object, and mask is extracted in a differentiable manner from the self attention. But you can, for example, change the scale of the object or move the object in the image. Uh, uh, you know, like a simple example of changing the geometry, right? Uh, yeah, I, I didn't see any works that really change the geometry uh, robust, that work robustly on many examples. I think if you, if you try to change it, uh, I mean, you, you need to both condition on the, the input image and the new geometry. Uh, yes, so, so there are works to try to first predict the, the mask of the new image and use some self-attention uh, from the new generated image to the first one. Uh, but I play with it a bit. I didn't, it, it, it doesn't work as well as, uh, as you expect. I, I think you still need the... Uh, some supervision of maybe from videos or things like that, that you can really get some pairs of the new geometry and the image before and after. I see. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any, more, any more questions? Uh, also in Zoom? Oh, okay. okay. Well, okay. Yeah. okay. Let's uh, thank Amir again for the great talk. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, well, uh, open the door. Yeah, we will see you in like one for one one meetings in an hour. Thanks, sure. you. Thank you. Yeah.